Hello and welcome back to Fourier Transform, the video course where we talk about Fourier series, integral transformations and related stuff. And indeed, in today's part 23, we will finally build the bridge from the Fourier series to the continuous Fourier Transform. This means that we can leave the periodic functions behind us and talk about the general concept of the Fourier Transform. However, as always, before we discuss the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. Moreover, you should also know that you can download a lot of additional material with the link in the description. Ok, then let's immediately start talking about the Fourier Transform. In fact, the general definition works for integrable functions defined on Rn. Obviously, we can first consider the case n is equal to 1, such that we can see the connection to the Fourier series. And moreover, in general, the values of the function can be complex numbers. And there, the continuous Fourier transform can act as an integral transformation. And then what comes out is a function we call f hat, defined on the frequency space. However, in contrast to the Fourier series approach, now the frequencies also form a continuum. So we are not in a countable set like the integers, here we also have a function defined on Rn. Therefore to distinguish it to what we have done before, we can call it the continuous Fourier transform. But the overall idea still stays the same, we want to describe the original function by using cosine and sine functions. And the obvious difference here is that the original function does not have to be a 2 pi periodic function anymore. Therefore, I would say we first should write down the connection between the continuous Fourier transform and our original Fourier series. Therefore, we first stay one dimensional and periodic for our function f. This means we can sketch the graph of f on a compact domain. For example, we can say we have minus capital T here and plus capital T on the right. Hence the function is 2t periodic and it should be integrable on this domain. Therefore the first idea to lose this periodicity requirement could be to increase this capital T more and more. However, it turns out that this does not change anything because we can always scale the function down to 2 pi periodic functions. We just have to scale in the x direction by 2 pi over 2t. In other words, we don't lose any information because we just shrink the whole graph to a smaller domain. So the conclusion is that we can just use all our Fourier series methods to this new function on the bottom. So maybe we should give this function a new name, let's call it f tilde for the moment. And now let's calculate the Fourier coefficients for this new function f tilde. And there you already know, we just have the integral from minus pi to pi of the function e to the power minus i k x. And then we just multiply this by f tilde of x. So these are the Fourier coefficients of f tilde, but of course we want to go back to our original function f defined from the interval minus t to t. And this is not complicated at all, we just do a substitution in the integral. And obviously the substitution is just the scaling from above. So our new variable can just be a lowercase t. Therefore our new integral here goes from minus capital T to plus capital T. And inside the integral instead of x we write 2 pi over 2 times capital T times lowercase t. And there I can tell you that I will not cancel the 2 in the fraction because I want to emphasize the period we have. On the lower level we are 2 pi periodic and on the upper level we are 2 times t periodic. Ok, and now inside the integral we also have f tilde scaled, which is our original function f. In other words, this here is simply f of t. And finally we have the last part of our substitution, which is the differential dt. And there you should see, it cancels nicely with the factor in front of the integral. Therefore our new factor in front is the new period 2 times t. And moreover we have our full result, this one is the final formula for the Fourier coefficient if the period is given by 2t. 
In other words, these are the functions that form an O and S with our new period. Which means, if we consider square integrable functions, we can form the Fourier series and we know it converges. More precisely, we know it converges to the original function f with respect to the L2 norm. So we can write f as an infinite series where we have our new O and S involved and also the Fourier coefficients. And there you know, the common notation we have for them is f hat of k. So in the two pi periodic case, we know it's given by this formula and now by the substitution, we have this formula for the general case. So in that sense, we don't have anything new, just instead of 2 pi, we talk about 2 t. However, this t is now changeable, so we can make it larger and larger, such that in a limit, we cover the whole real number line. And exactly this is our approach, what would happen in a limit t to infinity? We don't have to be completely strict what we actually mean by the limit, because it's just a motivation here. Therefore, let's first rewrite the formula and then apply some limit process. Again, here we go through all possible integers k, but the corresponding frequencies are not integers anymore. Actually, the frequency we have is here between i and t. So let's shorten it with a new notation, let's call it c with index k. This is the Greek letter xi, which you can also pronounce as xi. And indeed this definition helps us, because now we can see the frequencies as points on the number line. For example, there we could have xi1, then the next one with index 2 and so on. And on the other hand, we also have xi-1, xi-2 and so on. So we always have infinitely many, but now you should see what happens when we increase our capital T. Then, because t is in the denominator of the definition, the points on the number line get closer together. So in this picture you already see that in some limit process t to infinity, in the end we would cover all possible frequencies on the real number line. Again, it's not completely precise, but it already makes sense for us. And indeed, this will be our motivation for the next calculations. So first we use our xi k here in the exponent and also the integral representation of the Fourier coefficient. Which means also there inside the integral we have our xi k for the frequency. And now actually our goal is to read this sum as a Riemann sum, so as an approximation for an integral. Which means in the picture on the real number line here, what we actually need is the distance between two points. So something we could call delta xi, because it's the difference between two consecutive points. So more concretely, we have xi of k minus xi of k minus 1. And obviously this calculation is not complicated at all, we just get 2 pi over 2t again. So quite simple, but this is the constant we have to introduce into our formula, such that we can do the next steps. And in fact, it's almost already there, we just have to introduce an additional factor 1 over 2 pi. Which means we still have the whole integral divided by 2 pi. And we can already see that as a function that depends on the real variable xi k. And let's already give it a good name, let's give it a thick hat. And maybe also an index t, because this one we want to increase. And as already said, the variable name is our xi k. And there you might already guess, this is almost already the Fourier transformation of f we want to get. But first, for the motivation, you should read our sum like that. On the left, we have the value of a function at a point c k, and then we multiply it with the distance on the x-axis. This means, if we have the graph of a function here, we sum up rectangles. In other words, what we have is an approximation of the integral. And moreover, we also already know that the partition here gets finer and finer if we make t bigger and bigger. Or to keep it in a rough state, we could say if t is really large, then this whole infinite sum can be represented by an integral. For a really large t, it's almost equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. And inside the integral, now we have the real variable xi. 
And as always, delta C is now just D C in the integral. Moreover, for f hat, we also want to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity. But please never forget, this factor 1 over 2 pi is always involved. We cannot get rid of it, either it's in the integral inside or on the outer integral here. Ok, so now please see, this was the motivation what should happen if we send t to infinity, which means we consider a non-periodic function f defined on the whole real number line. Then the Fourier coefficients become this Fourier transform where c can be any real number. And on the other hand, the Fourier series goes to a whole integral and it should still represent the original function f. Hence, for non-periodic function f, we would define our Fourier transform like that and then we get an inverse formula like this. And for this reason, the continuous Fourier transform has exactly this form. However, since the whole situation here is symmetric with two integrals on both sides, this factor 1 over 2 pi is a little bit annoying. Therefore, one usually distributes this factor to both parts to keep this symmetry. Therefore, the definition of the Fourier transform of f can be written with a factor 1 over the square root of 2 pi in front of it. Otherwise, nothing changes. Inside the integral, we have the exponential function, but with a minus sign. Otherwise, we just have our function f inside the integral, so the only requirement for the continuous Fourier transform is that we have an integrable function. Or in short, you would write f is chosen from L1. However, there it's not clear at all that our f hat is in L1 as well. Hence, this inverse formula might not be so general as we want it. But of course, this is what we have to discuss in all details in future videos. And there I can already tell you, the step 2rn in this definition here is not a problem at all. So this is something we can already do in the next video. So I really hope I meet you there again and have a nice day. Bye bye.